And I'm here at Dell's presence at MWC with Vice President of Marketing for Telecom and Edge Computing, Aaron Chasen. Aaron, how's it going? Doing great. How's it going today, Dave? It's going pretty well. Pretty excited about what you've got going here, and I'm looking forward to getting the tour. Are you ready to take a closer look? Ready to do it. Let's go take a look. For us in the telecom ecosystem, it's really all about how we bring together the different players that are innovating across the industry to drive value for our, uh, our CSP customers. So it starts really for us at the ecosystem layer, bringing partners, bringing telecommunication providers, bringing uh, a, a bunch of different technologies together to innovate together to drive new value. So Paul, take us a little bit through what we're doing to, to develop and bring in these partnerships and develop our ecosystem. Uh, sure, thank you, Aaron. Uh, you know, one of the things that we've been focusing on, you know, Dell is really working with many players in the open telecom ecosystem, network equipment providers, independent software vendors, and the communication service providers. And, you know, through our lines of business or open telecom ecosystem labs, what we want to do is bring them together into a community with the goal of really being able to accelerate open innovation and uh, open solutions into the market. And that's what this community is really about, is being able to you know, have those communications, develop those collaborations, whether it's through, you know, sharing information online, having webinars dedicated to sharing Dell information, whether it's our next generation hardware portfolio we announced here at the show, our use case directory, our, how we're dealing with new service opportunities, but as well as the community to share too, which I think is an exciting way for us to be able to, you know, what is the knowledge thing, as well as activities at other events that we have coming up. So really the key thing I think about the, the uh, open telecom ecosystem community, it's collaboration, and accelerating the open industry forward. So, so Aaron, if I'm hearing this correctly, you're saying that you can't just say, hey, we're open and throw a bunch of parts in a box and have it work? No, we've got to work together to integrate these pieces to be able to deliver value. And, you know, we opened up, a, in, in, in our open ecosystem labs, we started a, a self-certification process a couple of months back. We've already had 13 partners go through that. We've got 16 more in the pipeline. Everything you see in this entire booth has been innovated and worked with partnerships from Intel to Microsoft to, uh, to uh, uh, Wind River and Red Hat and others. You go all the way around the booth. Everything here has partnerships at its core. And why don't we go to the next section here where we're going to be showing how we're pulling that all together in our open ecosystems labs to drive that innovation. So Aaron, you talked about the kinds of validation and testing that goes on so that you can prove out an open stack to deliver the same kinds of reliability and performance and availability that we expect from a wireless network, but in the open, in the open world. Uh, what are we looking at here? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the one of the challenges to a very big, broad, open ecosystem is the complexity of integrating, deploying, and managing these, especially at telecom scale. You're not talking about thousands of servers in one site, you're talking about one server and thousands of sites. So how do you deploy that predictable stack and then also manage that at scale? I'm going to show you two places where we're talking about that. So this is actually representing an area that we've been innovating in recently around creating an integrated infrastructure and virtualization stack for the telecom industry. We've been doing this for years in IT with VBlocks and VxRails and others. Here what you see is we've got uh, Dell hardware infrastructure, we've got uh, an open platform for virtualization providers. In this case, we've created an infrastructure block for Red Hat to be able to supply an infrastructure for core operations and packet cores for telecoms. On the other side of this, you can actually see what we're doing with Wind River to drive innovation around RAN and being able to simplify RAN, VRAN and ORAN deployments. What does that virtualization look like? Are we talking about uh, traditional virtual machines with OSs or is this containerized? cloud native, what does it look like? Yeah, it's actually both. So we can support uh, virtual uh, software as well as containerized software. So we le leverage the Kubernetes distributions for these to be able to, enable to deploy you know, cloud native applications, be able to modernize how they're deploying these applications across a telecom network. So in this case with Red Hat, uh, it's, it's going to be leveraging OpenShift in order to support containerized apps and your packet core environments. So what are, the, what are some of the kinds of things that you can do once you have infrastructure like this deployed? Yeah, I mean, by, by partnering broadly across the ecosystem with VMware, with Red Hat, um, with, with Wind River and with others, it gives them the ability to be able to deploy the right virtualization software in their network for the types of applications that they're deploying. They might want to use Red Hat in their core, they may want to use Wind River in their RAN, they may want to use uh, a Microsoft or a VMware for their, for their edge workloads, and we allow them to be able to deploy all those but centrally manage those with a common user interface and a common set of APIs. Okay, well I'm dying to understand the link between this and the Lego City that the viewers can't see yet, but it's behind me. Let's take a look. So let's take a look at the Lego City that shows how we not deploy just one of these, but dozens or hundreds of these at scale across the cityscape. So Aaron, I know we're not in Copenhagen. What's all the Lego about? 
<laughs> yeah, so the Lego City here is to show, and uh, really there's multiple points of presence across an entire metro area that we want to be able to manage if we're a telecom provider. We just talked about one infrastructure block. What if I wanted to deploy dozens of these across the city to be able to manage my network, to be able to manage, uh, uh, to be able to deploy private mobility potentially out into a customer or enterprise environment and be able to manage all of these uh, very simply and easily from a common interface. So it's interesting. Now I think I understand why you are VP of marketing for both telecom and edge. Just heard, just heard a lot about edge and I can imagine a lot of internet of things things yeah. hooked up at that edge. Yeah, so why don't we actually go over to another area where we're actually going to show you how one small microbrewery in, this, in, in one of our cities nearby uh, in my, my hometown in, in Massachusetts is actually using this technology to go from more of an analyze, analog world to digitizing their business to be able to brew better beer. So Aaron, you bring me to a brewery. What do we have, what do we have going on here? Yeah, so actually about, about a year ago or so, I, I was able to get my team to come together finally after COVID to be able to meet each other and have a nice team event. One of those nights we went out to dinner at a, at a brewery called Exhibit A in Massachusetts, and they actually gave us a tour of their facilities and showed us how they actually go through the process of brewing beer. What we saw as we were going through it, interestingly, was everything was analog. They literally had people with pen and paper walking around checking time and temperature and the process of brewing the beer. And they weren't asking for help, but we actually saw an opportunity where what we're doing to help businesses digitize what they're doing in their manufacturing floor can actually help them optimize how they build whatever product they're building. In this case, it was beer. Hey, Warren, good to meet you. What do we have going on? That's all right. So yeah, basically what we did is we took some of their assets in the uh, brewery that were completely manually monitored. People were literally walking around the floor with clipboards writing down values. And we sensorized the asset, in this case fermentation tanks, and we measured the uh, pressure and the temperature, which in fermentation are very key to monitor those because if they get out of range, the entire batch of beer can go bad or you don't get the consistency from batch to batch if you don't tightly monitor those. So we sensorized the fermentation tank, brought that into an industrial I.O. network, and then brought that into a Dell gateway, which is connected 5G up to the cloud, which then that data comes to a tablet or a phone, which they, rather than being out on the floor and monitoring, can look at this data remotely at any time. So I'm not sure the exact date, the first time we have evidence of beer being brewed by humanity, yep. but I know it was thousands of years ago. So it's taken that long to get to the point where someone had to come along, namely Dell, to actually digitally transform the beer business. Is this sort of proof that if you could digitally transform this, you can digitally transform anything? Absolutely, you name it, anything that's being manufactured, sold, uh, uh, taken care of, you know, any, any, any business out there that's looking to be able to modernize and deliver better services to their customers can benefit from technologies like this. So we've taken a look at the ecosystem, the way that you validate architectures. We've seen an example of that kind of open architecture. Now we've seen a real world use case. Do you want to take a look a little deeper under the covers and see what's powering all of this? We just this week announced a new line of servers that power Edge and RAN use cases. And I want to introduce Mike to kind of take us through what we've been working on and really what the power of what this is providing. Hey Mike, welcome to theCUBE. Oh, glad, glad to be here. So what I'd really like to talk about are the three new XR series servers that we just announced last week and we're showing here at Mobile World Congress. They are all short depth, ruggedized, uh, very environmentally tolerant, and able to withstand you know, high temperatures, high humidities, and really be deployed to places where traditional data center servers just can't handle, you know, due to one factor or another, whether it's depth or the temperature. And so, first one I'd like to show you is the XR7620. This is uh, 450 millimeters deep. It's designed for uh, high levels of acceleration so it can support up to two 300 watt uh, GPUs. But what I really want to show you over here, especially for Mobile World Congress, is our new XR8000. The XR8000 is based on Intel's latest Sapphire Rapids technology, and this is, happens to be one of the first uh, EE Boost processors that it's out. And basically what it is, is an, it's an, ex, an embedded accelerator that makes uh, the, the processing of VRAN loads very uh, very efficient. And so they're actually projecting a uh, 3x improvement uh, of processing per watt over the previous generation of processors. 
This particular unit is also sledded. It's very much like uh, today's traditional baseband units, so it's something that is designed for low TCO and easy maintenance in the field. This is the fru. When anything fails, you pull one out, you pop a new one in, it comes back into service, and the, the uh, you know, your radio is, is uh, minimally disrupted. Yeah, would you describe this as quantitative and qualitative in terms of the kinds of performance gains that these underlying units are delivering to us? I mean, this really kind of changes the game, doesn't it? It's not just about more. Is it about different also in terms of what we can do? Well, we are bring, to his point, we are able to bring in new accelerator technologies. Not only are we doing it with the Intel, uh, 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 the VRAN boost technologies, but also, it, it, we didn't bring it to you, but there's another booth here where we're actually working with our own accelerator cards and other accelerator cards from our partners across the industry to be able to deliver the price and performance capabilities required by a VRAN or an ORAN deployment in the network. So it's not, it's not just the chip technology, it's the integration and innovation we're doing with others, as well as, of course, the unique power cooling capabilities that Dell provides in our servers that really makes these the most efficient way of being able to power a network. Any final thoughts recapping the whole picture here? Yeah, I mean, I would just say if anybody's uh, is still here at Mobile World Congress, wants to come and learn what we're doing, I only showed you a small section of the demos we've got here. We've got 13 demos across on the floor here. Uh, for those of you who want to talk to us uh, and, and have meetings with us, we've got 13 meeting rooms back there, over 500 customer and partner meetings this week. We've got some whisper suites for those of you who want to come and talk to us about what we're innovating on going forward. So, you know, there's a lot that we're doing. We're really excited. There's a ton of passion at this event, and uh, we're really excited about where the industry is going and our role in it. Appreciate the tour, Aaron. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Well, for theCUBE, again, Dave Nicholson here. Thanks for joining us on this tour of Dell's presence here at MWC 2023.